IIT Kanpur Director Abai Karandikar with us. He is a founder member and former chairman of TSDSI and part of TRI in 2017 and 21. Let's have a talk with Abai Karandikar. As a director, how do you think IIT Kanpur can contribute to India's future? As, uh, you know, as you know that we are a technology institute primarily and uh, we have a lot of um, responsibility, I would say, um, and also it is our vision uh, to contribute uh, towards uh, uh, developing indigenous technology in all sectors, wherever we have expertise. So, uh, to the extent possible, we will really like to contribute towards uh, as you know, the Honorable Prime Minister has said, Atma Nirbar Bharat. And I think uh, we as an institute uh, has a role to play uh, in taking our research from lab to the market. So I think that is where we can make a national impact. In the past few years, uh, we have done in many areas. Uh, uh, for example, we have contributed uh, to the uh, uh, 5G project. Uh, we have contributed uh, to the cyber security projects. Uh, we have contributed to the medical devices uh, and medical uh, diagnostics and drug discovery uh, areas. So there are many areas in which we have been contributing and I think in the years to come, uh, we can only strengthen it uh, towards uh, you know, developing technology indigenously in the country. IIT Kanpur uh, known for its science and technology, now it's set up a kind of medical school. So how it will become? Yeah. So actually, uh, as you know that next generation research in healthcare is now happening more and more at the intersection of engineering and medicine. And uh, if you look at the entire medical education system in the country, almost all medical colleges in India are standalone medical colleges. Unlike in other parts of the world like US or Europe, where you know it is like under the university where sciences departments engineering departments and medical school coexist and that is why you know there is a more interactions and that is why there is more research based medical educations that is somewhat lacking in the country and given the fact that next generation research in healthcare is now more technology driven we believe that given our strength in engineering and technology uh, we can make a difference in the medical education and research in the years to come. So that is the vision behind setting up a medical school. And in that context, we want to focus more on super speciality and research based uh, degrees uh, and uh, not, you know, right now start an undergraduate program. So that is actually our vision. Okay. Uh, in an era of chat GPT, AI, how IIT Kanpur molds students towards it? No, uh, you know, uh, chat GPT is just a tool. So, so many tools have been developed uh, uh, in the past. Uh, and uh, as more and more tools get developed, uh, we need to uh, make best use of them, uh, both uh, in our education and research. Uh, as far as the AI uh, um, in general is concerned, we have been contributing to very large AI projects, uh, for example, uh, the uh, CP Gram portal, which is a Government of India portal where common citizens can upload their grievances. Uh, we have developed a backend AI engine which is processing these grievances and classifying them based upon the context in which these grievances have been uploaded. So I think this is a very large uh, AI project. Uh, we are also working on AI in healthcare uh, and uh, given the fact that uh, we have a large digital health mission program in the country, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, AI can also help uh, in that area as well. Uh, so we have uh, um, uh, doing fundamental and applied research in AI uh, and uh, IIT Kanpur has been working on it uh, uh, for the past, uh, you know, several years. In India, especially in Kerala, many students are going to foreign universities to study. So will it uh, negatively impact our country's growth? No, no, no. I think uh, 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 people are looking for uh, good opportunities uh, to study. Uh, the whole idea is that, you know, we have to now create uh, uh, a good quality uh, engineering educations uh, in terms of both colleges and universities in the country. 
Uh, and as you know that the new national education policy also emphasizes uh, on creating quality, large uh, multidisciplinary universities and the quality of faculty members. Once you know the quality improves, obviously, uh, I'm sure uh, our students would like to study here. The other thing that has happened is that there are now more job opportunities in India. In fact, if you see uh, 10 years back or 15 years back, 90% uh, of IIT graduates uh, used to go abroad. Right now, 90% uh, are staying here and only 5 to 10% are going abroad. And uh, a large percentage of them are having their own startups now. So the fact that 90% of IIT students are now staying in India is a reflection of the fact that there are more opportunities in terms of jobs and growth in the country. And that is why you know, people are not going to US or Europe, which definitely from IITs used to go. 30 years back, 100% of the students used to go abroad. But now that number has come down to just 5 to 10%. Yeah, and the same time, foreign universities are coming to India and discussions are going on with the ministries, and which experts uh, think that it will help young Indians of our country. So what do you think about it? No, I think uh, we would welcome them uh, and we would be happy to collaborate uh, with them. In fact, IIT Kanpur is having a large collaboration with several foreign universities. For example, with New York University, we are having these uh, uh, joint PhD degree program where the student can spend a part of the time in IIT Kanpur and part of the time in New York universities and get degrees from both the universities. We also have a program with Rice University. We have a IIT Kanpur Rice Collaborative Center. We have a program with few Australian universities like Latrobe uh, and uh, University of Melbourne. So as an institute, we want to be globally competitive and we would like to work with world-class universities and collaborate with them. So in that sense, I think we don't have any problem if uh, uh, you know, uh, any university comes here. part of 60 forum in India. So uh, can you share its roadmap with us please? No, I think uh, I was uh, part of the 6G technology innovations group set up by the government and I was also chairing the 6G uh, spectrum policy task force. So we have submitted our report and as you know that this report was uh, uh, also unveiled by the Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, so now that forms the part of the vision and uh, <coughs> now the government is also setting uh, up a Bharat 6G mission and a consortium of industry and academia is setting up Bharat 6G Alliance. So I'm a part of the Bharat 6G Alliance and our objective is to take our research to global standards and contribute the standards essential patents. So I think that is what you know we would like to do in the years to come. Okay, uh, now we have 5G already in India. So uh, which sector in particular will it will it get the maximum benefit of 5G? What do you think? 
no the 5g deployment will benefit all the sectors uh, not only you know it will bring the high speed broadband uh, but also it has applications in uh, e governance health sector education uh, agriculture transportation intelligent transportation so i'm sure i think all sectors because 5g will really form the bedrock of the all pervasive digital connectivity many foreign agencies experts things uh, it will not become india's decade but it surely becomes india's century so as a director and an expert of uh, technology what do you think of it yeah i think as i as i mentioned that now we are slowly moving towards developing technology indigenously uh, india itself is going to be a large market so where we will not only deploy our home grown technology in the country but we will also be in a position to export this technology globally uh, and we have demonstrated that during covid for example we developed our covid vaccines uh, which was also exported globally uh, and in the years to come perhaps you know the 5g 6g technologies uh, uh, medical devices medical implants uh, that we were talking we were working artificial hearts kind of technologies i'm sure they will not only be useful in the country but we will be in a position to globally export it okay uh, currently uh, we are aiming to become a global leader in semiconductor manufacturing and central government already approved 10 billion package for it so what do you think how will it become no, i think the government of india has launched this india semiconductor mission and as a part of the mission i think we want to have a semiconductor fab also here i'm sure it will spur growth uh, in the manufacturing sectors in the country particularly electronics manufacturing sectors in the country as we are from kerala uh, we are like to know how do you see kerala's higher education so i am i'm i really uh, don't know uh, uh, much Uh, about the higher education system in the country but uh, in kerala we have an iit uh, we have a very uh, state of the art research centers in the form of vikram sarabhai space center uh, vssc uh, uh, and uh, we also have a very uh, good uh, research centers and academic institutions also uh, in the state uh, and uh, uh, and i'm sure uh, you know Uh, given uh, the entire ecosystem that is evolving uh, in the country uh, these are all institutes of national importance and they will contribute uh, towards the national growth this year uh, india is hosting g20 so how iit kanpur and you have become a part of it no i think in iit as an inst- as a many of our faculty members are involved in several uh, discussions that have gone into framing the larger agendas for example we are part of s20 which is essentially you know science 20 in fact our uh, professor ashutosh sharma who is a professor in department of chemical engineering he is actually leading the s20 discussions so those discussions will go into the uh, you know science technology part uh, we have also contributed uh, towards uh, uh, you know the e20 that is education part as well so as an institute i think we have been contributing Uh, to science technology education sectors in discussions that have been taking place leading to the final summit uh, in s- september okay uh, thank you thank you director for this conversation thank you thank you idu asia net news network prastuti ನೀವು ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಏಷ್ಯಾ ನೆಟ್ ಸುವರ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂಸ್